Hello, this is Arthur Hill, Senior Technical Analyst with StockCharts.com. It is Tuesday, September 18, and you're tuned in to On Trend, the show designed to keep you on the right side of the trend. We're going to look at the major index ETFs because they are stalling. It's just a balance between buying and selling pressure. We're seeing some selling pressure, though, in tech and tech-related ETFs. We'll show you the methodology behind ascending triangles. We're going to drill down into the sector summary by looking at airlines, transports, and defense. And then I'm going to follow up on some stocks to watch that we had in the past. Major index ETF stall. So I want to show a chart here that has four ETFs. We got the S&P 500 Equal Weight ETF, RSP, the S&P 500 SPDR, SPY, which is, of course, weighted towards large caps. Then we got the mid cap SPDR, MDY, and the small cap SPDR, IJR. And what I'm seeing here is small caps and mid caps started stalling out on August 21st here. Because you can see with the decline that we had on Monday, we're below that 21 August high there. The actual high was later in August, but we're back below this low in both mid caps and small caps. So these two, we can see that buying pressure and selling pressure pretty much equalized over the last four and a half weeks or so. When we look at large caps, we can see that we peaked here on the 29th of August, and basically buying and selling pressure have been equalized since the 29th of August. So they peaked out a little bit early. I'm not seeing like a lot of selling pressure. We could pull back a little bit more. I've marked a first support level here with the August lows and maybe that trend line. This trend line, by the way, extends up from that early April level on all of these. And we can see that small caps have broken that trend line. I don't call that a support level, but it does tell you that momentum for small caps has deteriorated. And that kind of confirms what we're seeing with the price moving sideways since August 21st. So perhaps we're ready for some sort of a correction. And all those green lines mark the August lows. And that's kind of the first support level or a benchmark to watch. If we start seeing breaks below those August lows, that could lead to a deeper correction. I'm a bit concerned with Monday's decline for two reasons. First of all, we had a gap up in the technology sector on Thursday, a stall on Friday, and then we filled that gap on Monday. So that little gap bounce that we had on Thursday didn't hold. And the second thing is I'm seeing selling pressure coming in pretty hard to some of the leading groups. Now, it's not enough to derail them and turn long-term bearish. But it does suggest that maybe there's some intensity in the selling pressure and that could lead to a correction, which would still be pretty normal at this stage. Because if you look at XLK here as an example, it moved from 63 all the way to 76. It was up over 20 percent with a pretty nice zigzag higher. And if it just gave up half of that advance, it would move back down to that 69 and a half area. And you can see that this kind of broken resistance level and this consolidation and this low kind of mark a support zone in that 6970 area that might offer support if we get a pullback and maybe at the top end around 71. But, you know, if we get around 71 and this RSI gets around 30, then I would be uh, interested in possibly a mean reversion set up. But the fact that the selling pressure was pretty intense and there's that gap you can see from Thursday and we filled it yesterday. So that is a bit of a concern. Now, if we look at some of the leading industry group ETFs within the technology sector, here's cloud computing. And, you know, it hit a 52 week high in late August. It almost hit one last week and then it got sl- clobbered today for a 1.7 percent loss. And again, this is not enough to derail the bigger uptrend, but you can see it's had quite a run and we could get a pullback. Maybe we'll test support here around 52, 53. The cybersecurity ETF is also a leader that got pounded on Monday down 2.32%. And I thought there was a flag forming here because you were trading flat after breaking out and holding above this breakout zone, which I think is bullish. But you can see with this sharp decline, it means maybe we're going to do a little backing and filling. And maybe the middle part of this consolidation around 38 will be that next support zone. And watch for RSI to become oversold 
for the next mean reversion setup. But I'm just noticing, you know, your leaders are getting hit and that's usually not a good sign. It's not long-term bearish. It just means we could have some short-term volatility or correction. And to show you that the leaders were not spared, their software, software hit a new 52-week high last week, IGV, and it's clearly the leading group in the technology sector, and it was hit for a 2.24% loss. So this shows you that pretty much all the leaders were hit. And if your leaders start stumbling and then you've got weakness in the broker-dealer iShares and in regional banks and in housing, home construction, then that could lead to a broader market correction or consolidation or something. I'm not sure where to mark support here because you just have higher highs and higher lows, you know, maybe in this, you know, low 190 area. And one that started to underperform in August is the First Trust Internet ETF. You can see that it formed a lower high there. And I was viewing this as just a consolidation within an uptrend. But we got hit pretty hard there in the beginning of September. Had a pretty feeble bounce and got hit pretty hard again on Monday. So that increases the likelihood that we break support and we have a deeper pullback in this one because it's already starting to show relative weakness with that lower high. And if you look at some of the holdings there, you've got Facebook, you've got Google twice, so it's the biggest one. E-Trade Financial is weak and Twitter is weak. So those ones have been weighing on the CTF. Now let's look at the buying and selling pressure dynamics at work in a descending triangle with examples using ITB and IAI. Now another spot we see a descending triangle would be the broker-dealer iShares ETF. But it's not a continuation pattern at this point. You know, typically it's a continuation pattern if you read the test textbooks. But I think it could also be a reversal pattern. Because you got this high here in March, and then we got lower highs in May and June, and then even lower high there in July, and another lower high here in late August. So selling pressure keeps coming in at lower levels, and the bounces tend to be shallower. We got a clear support zone here around say 63 64 and we're testing that one again but you know this breakdown which i identified last week looks like a bearish development here and i would expect a support break and if we measure the height of the pattern you know it's about 70 to 64 that's about six points you know that could take us down to around 58 for the broker dealer iShares. And, and this again is not one of these lightweight industry groups. You know, if you look at the top names here, you got Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley. And then a little further down, you got Schwab and Ameritrade and E-Trade Financial. And a subscriber or a Stock Charts member sent me a link uh, talking about JP Morgan move, moving to zero commissions. So it looks like this is weighing on that group. It's a race to the bottom for commissions. Now I want to show you a useful tool, how to drill down into the sector summary. We're going to go from the industrial sector to defense and aerospace, and we're going to see the stocks and how they're performing within those groups. Now there are a couple things that you can do here. First of all, you can see the period is set at intraday, but I want to see how they've been performing over the past month. You can also select three months, six months, year, or year to date. So if I select past month, we can see that the leaders are industrial machinery, airlines, commercial vehicles and trucks. And then we go down and we can see defense and aerospace. And that's the one I want to focus on to see where are the defense and aerospace stocks that are leading. And to find that, you just click on that link there. You can see the name is linked. And so if I click on that, I'm going to get all the defense stocks that are in our database. And that is sorted by the change there. I can also sort by, say, the scooter by clicking on that heading. So I get all the top scooters at the top. If I want to only focus on large, then I can search this table for the term LRG. So you can see as I type, it filters out those that don't meet that search criteria. So now I only have the large caps in the defense industry group, and it shows the ones that are leading. So we stay on one month, and we can see on a one month time frame, FLIR is leading, Huntington, Ingalls Industries, Level 3, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, General Dynamics, and Northrop Grumman. 
And those, of course, are the big defense stocks. And this is an area that we want to be interested in because I've been showing ITA, the defense, and aerospace ETF breaking out and hitting new highs. And all these are participating with nice gains over the past month. Now, if you want to remove those large ones, you just remove that search. If you just want small at the top right, you can see I just do SML and I can only see the small cap stocks there. Now, if I want to go back, I can just uh, double click and use my back button there. And you can also look at aerospace because aerospace stocks are similar and they've been leading. And I'll just look at the large ones here. And we can see Textron, Transdigum, not sure how to pronounce that one, Boeing, United Technologies, Rockwell Collins, and Airbus. And if you want to see your default sharp chart on any of those, you can see there's a link there. So I can click on that and I can get my sharp chart for further analysis. And you can see here United Technologies has, you know, maybe it's a big inverse head and shoulders pattern there. And that right half, you can see the advance and then this kind of consolidation and breaking out of that consolidation. So that's a new 52 week high for the big industrial aerospace company, United Technologies. And that is very positive for the group. So if we want to go back and look at that, I'll just show you up at the top here, you have some more links. So I can go back to the S&P sectors and see how they're performing over the past month. You can see industrials is the top performer over the past month. And if we back that out year to date, we'll get a different picture. You can see that consumer discretionary, AKA cyclicals is the top performer, technologies in second, but look at that industrials. It's a distant third, but still the year to date best performing sector, third best performing sector is industrials. And we're still getting some lagging from finance. Healthcare has been the best performer, I think over the last six months. As I've noted before, it just depends on the time frame you choose, and that will change your leadership outlook. You can see utilities are leading on the three month. And if we change this to six month, we'll see that we have a different leader. Energy is actually leading over six months. Who would have thought that? Now, this is a very crude sort, if you will, you know, one month, three months, six months. I usually like that three to six month time frame to look for, say, emerging leaders. A one month leader sometimes isn't going to hold. And as always, you got to go back and you got to look at the price chart. First and foremost, it's price action. Now we're going to look at some ETFs related to airlines, transports and defense and aerospace. Now here is the industrials SPDR and I showed you that it was one of the leading sectors on the different time frames when I was looking at the sector summary. And there you can see the top holdings, BA, 3M, General Electric, Honeywell's making a big move, Rails are moving, United Technology and Lockheed Martin and Raytheon are doing good. And if you look at this chart here, there you can see where industrial started turning the corner with that higher low from May to June, July. And then you got the first big surge, the pullback. Now we got the second big surge. Now it's getting pretty extended, if you will. We've gone from around 74 to 79. So that's a pretty sharp advance. I don't think it's bearish in any way, shape or form, but it might be prudent to let it come to you. In other words, look for a pullback. And I would expect this kind of zone here in this, this breakout zone here to turn into a support area. So if we get a throwback here, that's the first level to watch. This is the aerospace and defense ETF. And most of these stocks are part of the industrial sector as well. And I've been following this one since we got this upturn here and that little breakout there in early July. And then we had that little falling flag. So that was a second opportunity with that flag breakout. And even on a bigger picture, we have this kind of triangle breakout working there at the end of July. And now we've moved to new highs. So this is clearly definitely one of the leading industry groups right now. And if you look at the stocks, the way they're turning up, like Lockheed Martin and United Technologies and Honeywell, Rockwell Collins as well, doing good. Now, this kind of, you know, resistance zone in here, excuse me for the errant mouse, I'm on the road this week. But we can see this kind of resistance zone will turn into a support. So if we get a throwback, we would expect support in that 205 area. 
Airlines are also showing le a leadership since the end of June, early July there. Look at that big advance from 28 and a half all the way to 32 and a half. You know, airlines were lagging for most of the year up until that low. And we got this breakout with the big surge in August and this kind of resistance zone turned into support. And this is kind of a volatile ETF. So I use a raw regression channel to define this uptrend. And the way that works is you can see I've stopped here, but now we've got a higher high because of the close that we had on Monday. So I need to extend that rough regression channel. So I'm going to click the annotate link down there in the lower left, take the select tool, and I'm going to grab that channel and I'm going to extend it. And you can see as I extend it, that lower trend line also extends. And so I can raise support. And I also look for, you know, kind of a round number as well as some lows to confirm that. So there we got a couple of lows in that 31.78 area. And then at 31 and a half, that's a round number to give us a buffer. So I would stay bullish on airlines unless they close below 31 and a half here. And as long as airlines do well, that's going to be a positive for the industrial sector, even though they really make up a pretty small percentage. Uh, but still, you know, they're part of the group and they're helping. Now, I want to look at the Dow uh, Transport ETF. This is IYT, as you can see up there. But before we do it, I just let you know, I went to the iShares website. And if you just go to Google, you type in IYT ETF Holdings, and you'll see a link for the iShares website, or you just go directly to it. And there you can see the holdings, the top holdings. And FedEx is the top holding by far 13% or so. And then you can see UPS around 6%. So these two international freight forwarding companies account for around 20%. And then we got some railroads coming in up at the top as well. So railroads make up a, over 20% of the ETF right there. You can see Norfolk Southern, Union Pacific, Kansas City Southern, and CSX. So rails are very important here too. And we go back and we look at IYT, we can see this big surge into January there and then a long consolidation period. And we got that breakout with that big move in July into August to new highs. We're getting a little bit extended here with IYT and a lot of stocks. And again, this kind of resistance zone here turns into first support area to watch. So maybe a throwback here and you look for support and maybe a short-term oversold reading if we dip to around 198 and RSI gets close to 30. Now, another way I like to look at a group of stocks within one industry group or an ETF is using a candle glance chart. And I've put the top nine stocks in the Dow Transports here in this candle glance chart. And keep in mind that the Dow Transports is a price-weighted average, and that means the stocks with the highest price carry the most weight. So you can see FedEx there at $255 a share roughly is clearly the biggest weight. It's weighing more than twice United Airlines, which is priced around 90 there in the right hand corner. Now these charts are going back to March and we can see FedEx has just kind of been chopping around, but the swing is clearly up here and it's been one of the leaders since July. Now, if you want to look at a stable uptrend, look no further than Norfolk Southern and a lot of the railroads. I mean, this is just one of the most stable, tightest uptrends that you're going to get. It's moved from 130 to 180 in a pretty boring fashion. And when you get these type of tight, stable uptrends, you can see you get tight consolidations, you get very short pullbacks. But that was a little, you know, flag wedge thingy and a little breakout there and then a gap. So you have to just look harder for the signals and the pullbacks because rails, you know, they're not the most exciting companies. They do things good, but, you know, they're just, yeah, they're just not the most exciting high growth companies. Union Pacific, uh, a little more volatile than Norfolk Southern, but, you know, had a bounce, a nice pullback that would have formed a flag or wedge or channel and then a breakout there and another consolidation and a breakout. And you can see, you know, even though this stock's gone from 125 to 155, it spent a lot of time correcting, didn't go down far, a lot of time moving sideways. 
So the minority of the time, it's actually making these big moves. And then the majority of the time, it's kind of just dilly-dallying around or correcting or moving sideways. Look at J.B. Hunt here. Had a nice surge and then a pullback. And it looks like it has a breakout working here. Got hit pretty hard the last four days. But I think I would watch support here in this 118 area. And if that fails, then we have to reevaluate. UPS, one of the stronger stocks, a little more volatile because it had that sharp pullback, but then moved to a new high here. Pretty sharp pullback now, but I see support coming in in this 118, 117 area. You got broken resistance and then the lows there coming in to mark support. Kansas City Southern, another strong railroad. It was weak into the summer, but then in July it surged and broke out and it's continuing to work its way higher. It's part of a strong industry group. These are all part of the industrials sector. Sorry, that's a sector. And it's part of a strong industry group, which, which would be, of course, railroads. Then we get to Landstar. I believe this is trucking. Had a nice pullback there. And there you can see the breakout. Yeah, no, hindsight is always really 2020. Uh, getting a sharp pullback now. But this kind of resistance zone consolidation is a place to watch for support if we get there. Chiron, one of the leaders as well. Look at that strong move up to 100. I would look for support in the low to mid 90s there if it pulls back. And UAL, part of a very strong airline group. And airlines, one of these kind of bifurcated sectors, industry groups. You got some strength, you got some weakness, and this is one of the stronger ones. And it was consolidating. It got the first breakout, fell back into the zone, and then got that big gap up. So, you know, you kind of got to give it a little leeway, even if it fail, falls back and you think, oh, it's a failed breakout. And then it just kind of continued to work its way higher and hit new highs. So United Airlines is one of the leaders. And as always, remember, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can always send an email to arthurh at stockcharts.com. Can't answer everything, but I promise to read them, consider them, and possibly feature them in a future on-trend show. Now we move on to stocks to watch. And today, because the market is looking a little bit fragile, I'm going to follow up on some past setups, show you some that worked and some that didn't. So in this follow-up, I'm going to start with one that did not work. It is Proofpoint. It is part of Hack, which is the, of course, the cybersecurity ETF. And that one is a strong ETF. But, you know, I thought Proofpoint was going to bounce off support here because it had been consolidating a long time. And instead, we started getting failure last week. And then you can see with that plunge on Friday and Monday, it is clearly broken down. Now, it might set up in the future as a mean reversion trade, but as far as this bounce off support, it has failed and it's time to go back to the drawing board and reevaluate. So this is a failure. Next up, we have Qualys, and this was picked, these were picked two weeks ago, these two. And Qualys is still doing okay because it was picked, you know, when it was bouncing off support here. So it's come down a little bit, but it's still above support and it's not broken. And, you know, I can't make people's decisions for them. You have to decide on your own what is your entry, what is your exit, and what is your, when do you want to get out with a stop loss and when you want to get out with a possible profit. All right, I'm showing these setups. I basically look for a clear breakdown before I consider an exit because as long as the long-term trend is up, I expect it to take over at some point. Now, that means I'm going to have some bigger losses on my positions, all right, but it w tends to work in an uptrend. It's when you get these bigger trend reversals, you're going to get hit. So we can see Qualys clearly has broken resistance turning into support in this 80, 85 area. It's a wide zone, but, you know, this is a fairly volatile stock. It moved from like 50 to 97 and almost doubled. Next up, we have analog devices, part of the semiconductor group, and I picked it on this breakout here and it totally failed. 
And you can see we've broken below the 200 day moving average, the exponential moving average. You know, the 50 day is still above the 200 day and it's oversold. Uh, but as far as a breakout play, this has clearly failed. And I think when you're playing breakouts, you have to have a different strategy than when you're playing mean reversion. So this breakout here should have held. And, when, you know, clearly when we went down below 94, that was a failure. And that said, hey, this trade is not working. Let's move on. All right, so those are two failures, one success, well, one not success. Uh, Texas Instruments was another failure. And I also go back and I think, well, why did I fail on this trade or this pick? All right, and I think probably the biggest reason is semiconductors as a whole have been lagging and I probably should have stayed away. All right, because you can see here that Texas Instruments didn't make it above this high here in June. It, it's underperforming all year. It had lower highs working here. I thought it was a bullish consolidation after this breakout, but taking the bigger picture with semiconductors underperforming and Texas Instruments underperforming since January, I probably should have stayed away because there were stronger charts out there. That's you got to keep in mind, we always have a choice. We don't have to pick something just because we like it and we think it has a good risk to reward ratio. Or personally, I think you have to pick it because it has a strong chart. All right. That means you have less risk. So clearly, I thought Texas Instruments was going to bounce off support, but it failed and broke down. So I would stay away from this one. Bank of America is another one. You know, you look in hindsight and you think, well, why was I even messing around in the finance sector? Because it's one of the weakest sectors. And well, I'll tell you why. It was because of this advance we had in July. It looked like, you know, a wedge breakout and it looked like things were turning around for finance. And we got this pennant consolidation, but we didn't break out. So we didn't get the bullish signal after this pennant breakout. So there really was no signal. Instead, we broken down. Now, would I short Bank America? No, I'm, I'm not into shorting stocks, especially when we're in a bull market. All right. So this one is back to the drawing board. Now, next we have JP Morgan and JP Morgan is interesting because it's holding up better. All right. We see the weakness in the finance sector. But look, JP Morgan hit a 52 week high there in August. It's clearly one of the leaders. It's holding up quite good over the last couple of weeks. So there might be something going on here with JP Morgan. So I'm keeping this one on my radar for an upside catalyst here within this wedge, which could be a little bullish consolidation. Moody's is another one. You know, got this breakout, this surge here, but look at that big decline. All right. So if it closes below 175, that's going to be a failure. Trinity Industries is still working and it's still a possible bullish setup. This is a 52 week high, so it's on trend, a nice pullback, and it looks like it's on the verge of a breakout here. Now let's look at some that uh, worked here. We've got Marsha McClellan. This was picked three weeks ago as it was breaking out off support here. And this is part of the insurance group. So it was in a strong group, had a 52 week high and it was breaking out. It had three things going for it. And then the defense stocks, Rockwell Collins, part of a strong group in a strong uptrend, broke out here. It got hit hard yesterday, but I would expect uh, some support around 138 on kind of a throwback. Lockheed Martin worked. Now, this one wasn't on trend, but it was part of a strong group, defense and industrials. And you can see that little wedge. And I called this, you know, breakout from this wedge here. And we got a nice surge over the past week or so. Same with Rockwell Collins. Uh, this was one that was reversing its trend, but the difference between semiconductors and banks is it was a strong industry group and it was a strong sect, uh, sector as well, industrials. So we had an uptrend here and got that breakout there. And finally, Raytheon is one that is still working here with this consolidation and a fresh breakout. And that concludes On Trend. Thanks very much for tuning in and be sure to stay on the right side of the trend.